you can now support Ghost Maps on Patreon. Simply look for We Are Huntu or click the link in the description. Ghost Maps Entry 103 Kyong Siak Road, Singapore Lisa and I are sitting outside a coffee place along Kyong Siak. The area is filled with shop houses, all repurposed as cafes, bars, boutiques, or advertising agencies. It's at one of these agencies where Lisa works as an art director. She's in her mid-twenties and has been at this particular company for only a year. In that time, however, she's worked on massive global clients and has had to deal with more than her fair share of stress. I mean, I knew it was that kind of industry when I joined, she says, sipping her yin yang. Plus, the money's good. I say that there must be some other reason that keeps her working in advertising. Well, not advertising specifically, but this company is good people, she says, then pauses for a beat before continuing sheepishly. And it's dumb, but I really, really like working on this street. She says that, even though all these businesses have, in her words, turned the neighborhood into a hipster's paradise. She can still feel the beating heart of it. Lisa is currently on her lunch break. It's a rainy afternoon, so she figures the rest of her colleagues are going to be taking a longer break too. Not like the office is going to be totally empty anyway, she says, with a knowing smile. And I take this as my cue. I allow myself another sip of kopi, then fish out my recorder, place it on the table, and ask her to start from the beginning. It was an afternoon just like this one in June last year. A heavy rain beat against the windows of the agency's second floor office. The space itself was what you would expect from an agency in a shop house. Its walls were decorated with framed art or concert posters stuck up with blue tech. A whiteboard with scribbled ideas and deadlines sat in the centre. The smell of both freshly brewed and stale coffee permeated the entire floor. Art directors and copywriters yelled questions and instructions at each other from across the small office. They laughed boisterously and panicked just as loudly. Outside, the wind was howling. Which was why, even though the staff were shocked when the toilet door slammed shut suddenly, no one suspected anything out of the ordinary. A massive gush of wind blew in from the toilet windows. And everyone agreed, chuckling though slightly nervously. I'd have probably forgotten about that completely. If not for what happened... A couple of days later, Lisa says. She was in the office with another art director named Ismail and a copywriter named David. Everyone else was working from home that day. The three of them, however, were rushing for a pitch, so they decided it'd be better if they were all together. We had ordered in for lunch, and we're expecting a knock on the door at any minute, Lisa says. What happened instead was far more difficult to reason away than the toilet door slamming shut. The agency's main door was heavy and always secured with a digital lock. Some mornings, Lisa even found it a chore to pull it open after she had entered the access code. Out of nowhere, that main door flung open, 
outwards into the stairwell. It slammed into the wall perpendicular to it with a loud crash. Lisa and her two colleagues jumped and looked at each other, uncertainty and fear in their eyes. Ismail was the first to regain his composure. He stood up and walked slowly, cautiously towards the door, then looked up and down the stairwell. He even checked behind the door. Nothing. He turned to Lisa and David and shook his head. Maybe they ran away, he said, even though it was clear that he didn't believe his own theory. Silence filled the office for a moment. Then all three colleagues started packing up. Lisa was the last one to leave the office. Just before she pulled the door shut though, grunting with effort, she thought she saw someone standing in the middle of the office. She didn't get a good look at the person. Not at that moment, anyway. The rest of that week, Lisa, Ismail and David insisted that they work from home. Thankfully, our boss is pretty easygoing, she says. He grumbled a whole lot, sure, but he relented when we insisted, and we didn't even need to tell him exactly why. The following work week, the three colleagues returned to the office and everything seemed normal. No slamming of doors, no strange figures. But the three of them couldn't shake the feeling that all wasn't right. They wanted to speak with their boss, but couldn't figure out the best way to do so. He's one of those hardline non-believers, Lisa explains. So, we were already pushing it. That Sunday, Lisa was in the area not for work, but to meet her friends for coffee at a new cafe. She was walking from Tanjung Paga, where she was running some errands and passed by the office. She happened to look up and saw that the lights were on. If there was anyone working on a Sunday, it'd have been my boss, she says. But he was out of town that weekend. She stared up at the second-story window for a little while longer, unable to look away, drawn to it, out of curiosity certainly, but also something else. And that's when she saw the figure again. It stepped forward and stood in front of the window. This time, she actually got a good look at it. Somehow, she knew that this was the same figure that had stood in the middle of their office before. It was an old man in simple working clothes from nearly a hundred years ago. He had a stern expression and tanned, leathery skin. He looked down at Lisa and grimaced. I was frightened, but not in the way I expected, she says. At that moment, she knew that he meant her and her colleagues no harm, but he was clearly unhappy. 
She went for her coffee and tried as much as possible not to show her friends how shaken she was. The following morning, Lisa told Ismail and David what she had seen. They seemed skeptical at first, but didn't have time to give into their doubts. After telling them what happened, she made a beeline straight for their boss. She explained to him that he needed to get a specialist, a monk or a priest or someone like that to come in. The spirit needed to be set free. He was, of course, confused and annoyed, Lisa says with a laugh. But then a smile and David backed Lisa up. The colleagues insisted that their boss take their request seriously. It was a little harder to get him to relent this time. He brushed them off at first, but they kept at it for days. After a week, he just figured it was easier to bring in a specialist than it was to fire the three idiots who were badgering him, she says. Lisa's boss never told them what kind of specialists he had hired. He did reassure them, however, that the specialist had come in the following weekend. He still seemed like he didn't believe us or that it didn't make much of a difference, she says. But David, a smile and I, could tell. The old man was no longer there. Lisa wonders if the old man was trying to tell her something. She thinks that he was trying to warn her about working too much. But I still love this place, she says, gesturing up and down the street filled with shop houses. And I think I'll stay here as long as that love is still stronger than the kind of burnout that afflicted the old man. If you want to discover more of Southeast Asia's other side, subscribe now and follow us on social media. You can also be one of our supporters on Patreon. Look for We Are Huntu or click the links in the description. Ghost Maps is a Huntu production created by Kyle Ong and Wayne Ray with art direction by Jolene Lim and recorded on Audio-Technica mics.